All right, so I'm back today for my last video of 2025, and we're gonna be doing the Scout OT9 PCB edition. This is actually a hand wire board that I did a few months back that was kind of pretty cool. We're gonna be kind of evolving it today with an OLED. We're gonna be using some chalk switches, some custom 3D printed keycaps, and it is gonna be available on my shop if you wanna pick one up and build it yourself. But with that, before we actually hop in and start building it, I do have to give a massive shout out to Next PCB for sponsoring this video, then also sponsoring a bunch of my other PCB builds throughout the year. They allow me to kind of do some really cool stuff this year that I'm really happy with, but also they have really high quality PCB is kind of the highest quality I've actually seen in the different companies I've used. And then they have really robust parts sourcing, which is really helpful because you basically just tell them the part you need and they go ahead and find it for you. You don't need to give them like parts numbers. You just kind of tell them exactly what the part is. They'll source it for you. Tell if it works on the board and everything. And you're pretty much good to go there. So with that, I'll link them down below if you want to check them out. And we're just going to jump in and start building this. So on my desk right here is everything you will need or I will need to build the T9. And basically we have keycaps. We'll talk about those later. We have an OLED. We have the controller. But the big thing here is, of course, the PCB. So this is the PCB. And I mean, if I just hold that in my hand, look how small that is there. It's really, really tiny. And we are doing castellated pads for the controller, which are really nice because it basically allows us to get it really low profile. I'll show you that later. So that's the PCB. We have all the different components. We have a little CNC cut plexiglass cover for the OLED display, which I guess I can actually show you right now. This is a fully assembled one in white. You can see just kind of how nice that looks there and also how low profile it is. So we have those different parts in here. So that's everything for the actual PCB. That's basically what the PCB kit would come with because I think I mentioned this is available on my shop and, uh, there's my dog in the background, so good timing there. And then of course we have the 3D printed case, which is available on the repo if you want to print it yourself or you can buy it from my shop. Very thin 1.2 millimeter plate here for the chalk switches. And then we have just the kind of case here, which I made the edges kind of round into there. I think it looks really, really nice. Countersunk holes on the bottom. But the first step, of course, for this to build it is we just had to grab our PCB here. And then we're gonna grab our diodes and just pop those on. Now on here, if we actually look, we can see we have the little marker on the actual diode there. That's the way the, the line will go because the diodes will have a little line on them. We'll basically just align that. There's 14 in total that we'll solder on there. And then we can solder on the controller and then we'll solder on the actual switches because as this solder, I didn't do hot swap because hot swap does always raise the cost of PCB. It's another part you have to deal with. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna solder the diodes onto it. I'll be back after that. So there are the diodes soldered onto the PCB. And the one thing people always say about this is that the surface mount diodes are kind of hard to solder. And I promise they're really not. They're just kind of intimidating if you've never done it. Basically, like you saw in the time lapse, you just solder the one edge on and you kind of tack weld it on and then put the other edge. The hardest part is seeing where that line is. So if you see on here, there's a little line on the diode. You just have to align that. You might need a magnifying glass or something. Just kind of hold it really close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down now and I'm actually going to grab the controller here because this is what's kind of cool about this build and something I really like doing now. But on the edges, we have what's called castellated pads. And what that means is that the edge of these, if we look, has this gold plating on them. So the plating extends onto the edges and then onto the top. And what that allows us to do is actually grab our PCB here and we can pop this on and we can keep it super, super low profile like that. So we basically are mounting the controller to the PCB be kind of like if you were doing like an integrated MCU on the board, except we're just using kind of a carry board here, an actual development board. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put that on there. And then I'm going to grab a piece of captain tape over here, which is basically just some heat tape. And we can kind of put that on there to align the holes. So they're nice and a line there and then we'll just solder this controller on now the important thing to take note of here really more than anything is that you want to make sure the controller chip part is actually on the side of the diodes and that the buttons are on the front part if you do that wrong you basically won't be able to use the board because you'll be mounted the controller wrong so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this i'm going to go through and solder that on there. So there's the controller all mounted to the PCB here. This is actually the back side with the castellated pads. And then I kind of reflow them on the front side here just to get a good connection. But what we want to do next is the OLED. So if we actually grab this, you're going to see there are these four pads here on the front of the PCB. Remember the front is the side with no diodes here. And before we solder it on there, what is crucial to do is I'm going to actually just put this down. I'm going to grab the parts that come with the PCB kit. And you're going to see in here that we have these little four millimeter standoffs. We of course have the plexiglass and then we have a longer and a shorter screw. The shorter screw, the red washer and the standoff is what we're gonna attach to the OLED first. So if you actually grab this, you're gonna take the OLED, you're gonna flip it over, you're gonna put that shorter screw through here, you're gonna put the washer here and then attach the standoff to it. Now the reason for that is if we actually look on here, there is no way to kind of access the back of the OLED once it's soldered on. So by doing that first, you're gonna make sure that you don't have to desolder it and kind of put it back on after and ask me how I know that. I've done it a few times because I built this probably like five or six times now for different friends and stuff. But what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take the OLED, I'm gonna put those on and then I'm gonna solder it to it and then afterwards we can talk about the switches. So 
So there's the OLED on the PCB. And I realized after doing it, and I probably corrected on the screen anyway already, is that the longer screws actually go into the back of this here. You want to do the longer ones on the back, and then the top part here through the plexiglass will be the shorter screws. So just kind of a side note there to make sure you get that right. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually put this down. I'm going to grab over here a single switch, which is a chalk pink here. I think this will be a very nice switch for this because you can press it really, really fast. It's kind of lightweight, so you can get those multi-taps for the actual T9 layout through really easily. So we're going to grab these here. We're going to grab my plate. I'm going to put those into the plate, and then I'm going to solder that to the PCB. And then we pretty much have a fully functional board after that that we can just assemble. And uh, I'm just going to go through and do the switches right now. So there are the switches all on the PCB. They're all nice and assembled. If you look on the back here, you can also see that they're all soldered on there. What we're gonna do now actually is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna grab the case over here and put it off to the side. And then I'm gonna grab this baggie, which are the keycaps. Now these were actually printed on my new uh, printer over there, which is the H2D. So it printed them really, really nicely. And if we look at one, you can see they look really nice with the legends there. They're very low profile. If I actually grab this and then pop it onto the switch here, you can see just how thin that is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through, I'm going to assemble everything into the case, and then we can kind of talk a little bit more about the completed board. So there's the fully assembled board there. I think it looks really, really nice. And if I actually take this and put it here and then grab over here, we have the two different variants. So we have the white one here, so the black on white, and then the white on black over here, which I think looks really, really cool. And if we look at the side, and you can see how thin they are. On the back, we have, of course, the countersunk screws, which looks great. And then that is the texture build plate from the bamboos, of course. But if we grab this down and actually pay attention to the top here, you can see that we have that recessed section for the USB. Nothing too crazy there, just a recessed section. But I do that because if we actually grab a cable here, you can see they have this like fatter part on them. It just kind of allows it to get better clearance, but we can plug this in and you'll see that we have the Scudder T9 pop up on the OLED. I'm not going to go over how this functions fully. I recommend checking out my last video on the handwired edition because it's the exact same layout. It works the same exact way. Only difference here being that we have these two additional keys up top for left and right navigation on text. And then we have our OLED in the middle. Now, what I want to show you actually is the OLED because I normally say OLEDs aren't useful. On this one, it actually is because in the bottom right here, we have our delete key. So if I put this down and I hold that, this will actually activate our secondary kind of function layer. So what we have here is we actually have tab, which corresponds to the indicator there. We have our up arrow, we have enter, we have left, down, right, we have caps lock, bootloader mode, and then delete over here. So like forward delete on this key. You can of course do different things there. All the source code is available for this. But the other thing on this, I think I should explain here and not make you go watch my last four is if you want to say get a letter on this, how exactly do you do it? Well, it's basically T9 in the non-predictive aspect where if you want to get say C on this, you just tap two, three times. So you go one, two, three, and that would give you C. If you want to get E over here, you'd go one, two, you'd get E. Um, for Z down here, it'd be one, two, three, four, and you get Z. So it's kind of like that for, and then the other thing too that I can quickly quickly mention is that if you want to get the numbers, you basically just hold them. So like one, you get two, you get three, simple enough there. And then I think I mentioned these are left and right arrows. So kind of quicker text navigation there. All that's pretty much explained in my last video. So if you want to go watch that and kind of get a more in-depth idea of how the keynote works, I'd recommend going to see that. I think it looks really, really cool, really, really nice with the super low profile there. The 3D printed keycaps came out absolutely incredible on this. And yet again, on here too, I think they look really, really good. And I don't really have much else for this video. I do want to give another big shout out and thanks to Next PCB, especially over the last year, kind of sponsoring some of my projects. They've been really helpful and kind of allowing me to do things I probably wouldn't otherwise normally do. So a big shout out to them. If you do need PCB manufacturing, I would highly recommend them. PCBs are super high quality. But with that, nothing else to really say here. This is available at my shop if you want to pick up a kit and build one yourself. Um, half the files are kind of available, just the PCBs aren't available open source, but everything else is open source. So you can print the case yourself if you want, print the keycaps if you want, you can mess with the firmware, all that stuff. And then also, we just saw there the OLED went to sleep because it does have sleep mode to kind of prevent uh, burn-in on OLEDs because it is a thing you have to consider. But uh, yeah, these OLEDs are pretty cheap. It doesn't really matter if they do burn in eventually. But with that, I don't have much else to say here. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.